Hi there, I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I'm here with another good friend of mine, Mr. Dave Dugdale. He runs a website called learningdslrvideo.com, this thing that's playing behind us. So we're going to have a discussion about content in general and how Dave built up his sizable empire, and you see he's trying to be humble here, his sizable empire of YouTube, he's got a, the website obviously, he's got training going on, and it's all built around the idea of delivering content or training to folks like you that are interested in learning DSLR video. So Dave, welcome. Hey, thanks. Hey. Great, great to meet you finally in person. In person. I know. I know. Uh, I've been been on how your, many years of It's that? been it's quite a few years. Weird. It's, it's crazy. great. I feel like I know you because... You I, do know me. It's just been, we've <laughs> had a screen yeah. between us, you know, <laughs> but thanks to Google Plus Hangouts yeah. and, and Skype. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this started. So I'm going to start with a little background on you. So right now, your primary job is content creation, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. what you do. You're yeah. a content creator. How did you get started? Was this like, were you a kid in sixth grade? Like, you know what, one day. Where's that checkbox? <laughs> one day, I'm going to be a solopreneur. Is that, is that where you started? Oh, no, my background's in audio. Mm -hmm. I, I was an acoustical consultant. I designed sound systems for churches, airports, arenas, football stadiums, big facilities and uh, for many years. And, you, you know, when you get into video, they always say that audio is half of video. Yes. And, and which, it, and I'm learning it definitely is. Sometimes and, more than half. Yeah. and. Uh, I had the opportunity, you know, my, my wife um, works, mm -hmm. and we had, we're about to have our first child, and, oh, and she, well, 10 years ago, oh, 10 11 years ago, 11 years ago and she said, do you want to stay home first? Do you want me to stay home? And I was like, I can, you know, because I was working virtually um, telecommuting, and I was like, I can stay home first, and then I'll take my rotation. And, uh, and then I was like, I need to start a business, I need because, you know, the baby basically doesn't do much. <laughs> <laughs> Input output. Yeah. <laughs> so I started a few businesses, a few websites, and kind of to see what sticks. And um, some of my websites did extremely well. They were in real estate and stuff like that. And they're still doing just fine. And they're one of those things where I haven't touched them, but the money kind of comes in. Like what, what, what was the business model? Like commission? Like you recommend um, these properties, and if somebody bought it, like a, you'd get, it, a, get a cut of yeah, it? Yeah, at a, a national rental site where people could list on the site. And I would make money from that, or Google um, AdSense at the time. Sure. And back then, you know, I wasn't doing any black hat, but you know, gray hat type stuff. And mm -hmm. things were doing fantastic. And it put me in a situation where um, there was one day where I was like, I want to do this spoof on this Apple commercial. And I was like, the guy, you know, there was an interview setting, and the guy's all in focus, but everything behind him's all blurry. And I'm like, how do you get that? Well, how do you do that? Yeah. You know, this is yeah. years ago, and because I'm, I'm doing it with a camcorder, right? Right. Right. And uh, so everything's some, in focus. Yeah, right. and I was on a forum, and I, you know, once somebody said, you know, I just get the new Canon 5D Mark II, and I was like, what's that? And I'm like, and I looked, at it, I was like, oh, that's awesome, but the price tag's not awesome. And then, mm -hmm. then like a year or so later, the T2i came. I was like, ah, I'll get that. And um, so I got the camera. I was like, you know, there's a really steep learning curve on uh, shooting video, not only photos, but definitely video at this thing. So I was like, why don't I just kind of document it? Because I, I figured it was kind of a brain dump, and it was going back to the, those sites to see what sticks, you know? Right. Maybe right. something will stick, who knows? And then yep. websites are so it's cheap. Yep. Relatively, yeah. Relatively, yeah. And then so I, I threw up a, a few videos on like my experience of doing it, and um, people were like starting to comment, and they would, and I was like, why don't you try this or test this? And, and they, were, they were great, you know? YouTube comments, I know get a lot of flack, but what an amazing tool to learn from. To and get feedback about what you're doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's you just have to sift through some of the stuff, and then there's some nuggets in there. There's a lot of nuggets. And then and as YouTube's evolved, because I was like one of the first sign-ups on YouTube mm -hmm. back in, what, 2006 or something like that, and um, I, the stats that they have now are incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you can see where people drop off, yeah. And you're like, well, I did something around two minutes, yeah. and they're dropping off rapidly. Or, or you'll see a bump, a spike, yeah. and they're rewinding. And yeah. I'm like, what did I do there? And it's this constant learning. Yeah. And it was funny. I did um, Vimeo. Yeah. They, they interviewed me yesterday. And at the end of the interview, Andrea, I think that's her name, she goes, you're great on camera. And I was like, it wasn't that way in the beginning. I was like, I was terrible. You right. know, you go back to some of my first videos. And, uh, and you do lots of videos where mm -hmm. you're in front of the camera. So I got a question for you. It just, sure. oh, I, I, I'm interested to hear what you say because sure. when you look, when you do some of those, when you're looking straight on the camera, mm -hmm. what do you see? Do you see a lens or do you see something different? Because I don't see a lens when I look at the camera. I generally, that's a good question. When I'm looking at the camera, I, I kind of visualize another person 
there that I'm looking at and having the conversation with that person. So it, instead of, I see obviously a lens, but I'm visualizing in my head there's another person sitting there nodding and smiling and thinking, oh, he has something good to say. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not quite it for me because for me, I started that way. I was like, just talk like you're talking to a friend. And that seemed to work pretty well. Yeah. And, but what I, I always think, of, I'm not, ever, I turn off the recording and I'm like, what did I just see? I didn't see the lens, this big honking lens glass. I see myself in post, like when I'm editing. So I see myself in the frame. It's this weird oh, kind of type thing. Yeah. And I've done so many hundreds of videos, that's kind of what I see. And, and you, just that repetition of hundreds of videos, you get better and better. And once you yeah. made that comment, like, you know, you're great on cameras, like, I guess it's just from lots of iterating over. And then hearing all those comments, like, they'll even say something like, Dave, you seem down today. I'm like, yeah, I guess I was a little off, but mm -hmm. was that that noticeable on yes. camera? <laughs> yeah, it's funny how stuff, the body language transmits through. Yeah. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. So you were, that's, you know, the comments, we're talking about all that stuff. You've grown it to pretty big now. How many, how many views are oh. you getting on there? Uh, like 400,000 a month. 400,000, almost views. half a million views, views a, month, a month, which is bigger than a lot of television shows. You know, <laughs> I kind of thing. And you're doing it from your home office yeah. and you're kicking butt with it. How did you get it to that level? What are some of the things that you did was it, or was it just organic? You, you know, keep putting out good content and people flock to you. Or did you have some processes that you put in place? Well, it, it's going back to the, the YouTube stats are great. And I, in fact, now I've got a YouTube rep that calls me like once a month and says, Dave, how can I help you get better nice and and I'm like well, I'll take the advice because they even have more stats I'm sure they don't yeah. sta share on the analytic part of the side yeah but it, I you quickly figure out it doesn't take long to like what's going to be a big hit and what's not going to be a hit and then you'd like invest a ton of time in creating like awesome content like what do I want to see because I could, the biggest tip I can get people is just subscribe to a lot of channels that you like I, I subscribe to 60 channels mm -hmm. I don't watch necessarily all of them but you know as they flow through my feed but after a while, you just kind of subconsciously make notes like, I really like how he explained that, or he went too fast, or yeah. he's talking way above my level, or this person I can really relate to. Yeah. Um, and you just kind of make those mental notes, and then as you plug along, you know, and you get, and I'm sure you're the same way. Do you ever like walk around like writing a blog post in your head? All or the time. You start formatting it in your head. Time. Like yep. I start a review, even before I get the camera, I have these preconceived ideas and like, what am I gonna talk about? Mm -hmm. The pluses and minuses and it's stuff like that. It's done. It's just a formality of getting it out of your head. And exactly, it yeah. yeah. Yeah, what about, so with that, scripting, teleprompter, off the cuff? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't, and I'm sure there's people that can pull it off mm -hmm. and that get paid really well on TV, um, stations and stuff like that, but I do not read because when you read my the inflection, of my voice changes and I get really monotoned and I mm -hmm. the phrasing gets really yeah. off and like school. Right. So what I do is what I've learned over the years is get some B roll because you're gonna have to cover it over. And what I do is I do usually write things out, especially on a big review, mm -hmm. and because I'm gonna I want the SEO value on my site anyway. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, and then what I do is I read in paragraphs. So I'll read it in front of me, sometimes I'll read it twice, and then I'll put the paper away, turn the camera on, and then shoot that one so thought. Paraphrase, paraphrase not, what you just read. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I could do that better, do it one more time. And, yeah. But I'm not reading it. And then it'll, the thought is there, it's just the way it's structured, the way it wrote, it is not gonna be the same way I say it on camera. Right. And I think that helps connect the audience uh, a bit more, because if you read it, I, I, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So when you're when you're doing this stuff, so take me through a review. So you and just like from the beginning, say there's a like Sony for instance comes out with some new camera like the A7S, A7S, the awesome. A7S, and you want to review it. Yeah, it I want to buy it. <laughs> you want to buy it? Yeah, <laughs> shoots 4K. You want this thing? What what next? You know, let's say you skip skip past the formality of begging Sony to send you one to for review, and you get it. <laughs> you know, you it showed up. The FedEx just showed up. You got the box. What's your process from I got the box through? publish on YouTube. Yeah, like when I get the box, I'm, I'm already starting to watch because already people have gotten the camera before and you're seeing the footage and you're seeing what their comments are and you're seeing the, what they think the strengths and weaknesses are. And then for me, I'm like, well, how does it apply to me and my audience? It's more of, my audience is not shooting with C300s, C500s or Alexas or Reds and stuff. They're shooting with you know T3Is. Mm -hmm. They're shooting with um, smaller cameras mm -hmm. and that smaller form factor. So I. Try to do it and how it would relate to them. 
Yeah. And so I'm start, I think, and it relates to me because I like to have the small form factor. I don't want to be carrying around a red. Right. I don't. I want right. to buy a red. I don't have the money for a red or right. something like that. But plus they're big. Right. And you know, you know, as we were talking before, I want to even go smaller, like a GH4 of this, you know, A7S, so I can be more. You know, I'm more of a run and gun shooter, so I want to be like nobody even notices what I'm doing, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And those thoughts are like running through my head. It's like. How can I display this in this video where I am like in stealth mode, and maybe I do something like that where I, you know, I, I sneak into an art museum and I'm shooting video and nobody even mm -hmm. cares that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And so uh, that that thought process is going, and then I'll start writing. Like I got my phone, and and I'll think of it. And you probably do this to you. It's like, oh, this is great, and I'll just like talk into the phone and Siri it, mm -hmm. whatever, and say, blah blah blah. That one thought, and then. Put it away, and then when I'm ready to shoot the video, I've usually got a ton of stuff in that notes folder, mm -hmm. and then it turns different, in different bullet points of yeah, and and that's cover. exactly what I do. I do it more like bullet points now instead of writing the full paragraph sometimes, and then I just go when I shoot it, and then I bring it into the edit, and then I have to cover up all of that those hard cuts yeah. because you're going to see me jump around the screen like this if I kept it streamed. So I, I and people love B-roll, yeah. so yeah. give them the B-roll. That's cool. That's cool. So the, the, the other piece of that is, and you kind of glossed over it, the, the, the principal photography, if you will, of, what, you know, of the device that you're shooting. You, I called you once and you were telling me, oh, go get this rail system, <laughs> and, which I bought, you know, the, the slider. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that slider yeah, yeah. we were talking about? Yeah. So it's, your, your reviews are highly polished and professional. Oh, thanks. Yeah. How long does it take you to get from, okay, I've got it written, and you start principal photography all the way through till you got it in the can and you're bringing it into the computer. It depends. I mean, like some of these that are flashing by at like a couple hours, and some yeah. of them are like a month. Like oh, the Black geez. Magic, and, and I probably shouldn't have spent so much time on the Black Magic pocket camera. You know, the small one yeah. uh, that you can put like micro four thirds yeah. glass on. Mm -hmm. um, that one I spent way too much time on, but um, and because it, it was a brand new camera, it wasn't a Canon camera. Because it was a Canon camera, I was like, I know exactly. Yeah. how to, to go about it. but this is a very different animal yeah. and especially the color grading part of it yeah, and then showing your review you really showing like... that how like if I'm DaVinci Resolve if I try to do it this way with a LUT without a LUT and I, my audience like well what is even a LUT so you have to kind of explain that kind of stuff and yeah. that one took a really long time I don't think I should do that kind of long review right. but right. they do get watched a lot I mean like one of my videos like I compared the 5D Mark III to the D800 when it first came out mm -hmm. And some people were actually upset that I had the camera early. They're like, why is that guy getting a camera oh, before? Yeah, it was one of those things where the, the company I get the cameras from, they were like, can you send it to this other guy because he's hot, upset. Or like, whatever. <laughs> and that one's been watched like close to a million times. It's wow. just, which blows me away. I'm like. A million times. I know. I wow. just, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. That's it's, crazy. Yeah. See, the, hum the, the humble side of you is awesome. And I think, you know, that's, that's another part of it is I came into this. Um, you know the real estate sites that I, I was very highly competitive and I was like yeah well whatever and the, the real estate injuries can be kind of nasty you mm -hmm. know um, property managers sure. I hope I'm not offending any property managers <laughs> out there but sure. I would go to the, some of those conferences and they're all really cutthroat and all this stuff and and this community is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't consider any of the people, the peers of what I do, competitors. Right. And I think Rick Sam said it really well. He was like, I don't have any competitors because if people are, are going to buy the, my personality. If mm -hmm. they relate to me, they're going to buy right. my product or That's whatever. Right. And there's only, they're not really making any more of you, right? So you have a lock on that yeah. market. <laughs> so I, I, you know, the show like this is great to meet all these people, and I don't consider them as competitors at all. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. So let's, let's shift gears and talk. So we talked about con content creation a little bit. Let's talk about the distribution side of it. So you built the site, learningdslrvideo.com, and you're selling tutorials and all kinds of cool things on there. Was that part of the plan? No, you know? not or really. That there there was no plan in the beginning. <laughs> I was to see if it I'm sticks. Making it up. <laughs> see if it sticks against the wall and it yeah. stuck. And I was like, "What do I do with it now?" You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but then after a while, I was like, I could see I was making money from YouTube. I was making money from like you know affiliate relationships. I was making from banner advertising. And then I was like, you know, I think where I could really make some money is courses. And it's one of those weird business models, like. Well, if I create a really large audience, I pretty much know everybody will stay that you can pretty much, you know, sell to 1%. 1%. And that 1% will keep you going. And and that's true. And my conversion rate is sometimes 1, 2, 3%, depending on the month. That's great. If it's no but that's over millions, though, right? Like 
Be well, right. it depends on how you look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about the conversion rate, the people that hit my sales page, that, that kind of thing. But Got not. Okay. I wish it was based off of yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, do you use YouTube as a marketing mechanism and a content delivery system? Like, are you doing yeah, kind of yeah. commercials? Not commercials, but like promo videos for your your site. Yeah, and you can actually with analytics, you can see the funnel of where they come from and then how, where they go and how they get to the thank you page and buy. Um, right. And then yeah, YouTube is definitely up there. Vimeo actually it does pretty well too I was surprised because they have a very smaller audience mm -hmm. and Facebook um, I could see the conversions there as well yeah. uh, Twitter no yeah. Facebook, Google Plus not really not a lot of engagement there huh? no that's interesting yeah. because we see these big numbers on those sites but not a lot of conversions you know or not yeah. a lot of response like you post something and you know, it depends on the person because I'll see you know like a Karen Hutton or a Trey Radcliffe post something and like Four digit likes on it, you know, in a <laughs> no, day. It's like, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And other people, five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, uh, you know? I'm so, there. Yeah, yeah. So I have this, there's some magic going on there. I don't know what it is. It's a magic voodoo. So, so cool. So, what's next for LearningDSLRVideo.com? That's a really good question. I am just having so much fun. I don't really have like any sort of business model on this site. It's just like I'm. This is just awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's so. <laughs> I work out of my home. Yeah. I make. You know, pretty good money, yeah. Um, yeah. and my other sites do well too. And I don't even touch them, and that's that's what's really afforded me the. This is not easy to do. And for those people that are thinking, oh, I'll just create a site and create, creating this kind of content over and over again mm -hmm. is very time consuming. It you is. have a full time job. It's not. But I was afforded the opportunity. I did very well on some of my real estate sites. I just keep bringing cash that I can spend all day on this if I want that's to. That's so cool. And that's cool. but I just love. Like, you know, I talked about audio being half of the equation. I loved audio when I started in audio. But now I got video, so there's, I've like doubled my creativity. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten, and you say, where is it going? Kind of what I'm doing now is like, and I listen to your podcast, and I listen to a lot of people that come on and they kind of sound burnt out sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about a passion project they did and they kind of come to life again. Yeah. And I always hear that over and over again. I'm like, why don't I just do passion projects? Yeah. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, the revenue that I get from the site on different revenue streams, I can go approach somebody, um, like this swim coach, for instance. Uh, I said, I want to produce a commercial for you. I've never shot a 30 second commercial. Would you know? You know, I, it, if you say I'll do it for free, don't say I'll do it for free because mm -hmm. free implies that they won't take respect of it and they won't show up when you got all your gear set up and they're not there. But if you charge them something, and then out of that, for me, what's more valuable is I could possibly create a course out of it or a, a video comes out of it. Right. And I'm doing, I have total creative control. I'm like, this is mine. This is not yours. This mm -hmm. is this is mine and I can do whatever. And they're like, that's great. I'm doing, you know, they're getting something it's in return. Win -win. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Wow, this is a lot of crazy stuff going on. It'll, one other thing I was going to ask you about. So this big thing over there, <laughs> email marketing. You and I talked uh, about a year or so ago about email marketing and the importance of that. Yeah, yeah. How's, how's, in terms of the overall structure of your business, how important is email? That's very important. I mean, if I look at the conversions over the course of the year, when I release a product, and I, because I don't use that. The only time I use it, and I, and I'm, you, you, you could give me advice on this, but I should be, putting something out at least once a month off of that, but okay. I don't, and, I, and when I release a product, then I use it, and the conversion rate on that is by far the highest of all wow. the different things. Wow. Which even, even at, at a once a month cadence, it's still the highest of everything. Oh yeah, but I don't release a course every month. I should, you know, yeah, but yeah. I don't. How many courses do you have in there? I right? only have like five or so. Wow. I need to, I, yeah, I need like 20. But, but they're making money. Yeah, they're making money. As yeah. soon as you, it's like an annuity, right? You drop one in there and it starts generating <laughs> yeah. money for you. That's cool. Do you think this is a, the way, like the future? Because you hear, you hear a lot of photographers saying There's, you can't make money in photography, you know, depending on the photographer, you know. But is it, is it the age where you photographers need to be doing businesses like this to kind of supplement and build the, like have a muse like, like, like this so that you can keep going and doing your photography? I would say yes and no because it depends on the personality because if you, some people that love photography would mm -hmm. probably hate some of the stuff that I go through but I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, like writing pot, you know, writing out scripts, they might, I just want to go shoot, give me right. a camera, you know, right. or I want right. to process, you know, whereas, I remember I ran into this one kid, he's like maybe 18 year old, and he says, oh, I follow your site, you did great. And I sat down and we had coffee and we were talking and like this guy is like way far ahead of me on the learning curve. 
And, and I was thinking to myself, why is he so far ahead of me? And I'm like, he started at the same time. And I'm like, well, every time I do a review, I have to stop. And then the grind, everything comes to a halt. And I'm comparing and I'm learning. Right. But he's already, he's watched my review. He got the information from me. And he's gone on to the next thing. He hadn't even published. Right. He's just moved on to the next thing. And yeah. he's, so, I mean, the people that follow me are probably way ahead of me. But I just kind of, I backward engineer it and I get into it and I you know it's fun stuff and I don't think a lot of photographers would enjoy that right. as a business model they just want to go out and shoot and, and make pretty pictures yeah, it's a hobby for a lot yeah. of people you know that's in it's a passion slash hobby and that's quite different than creating something that's a sustainable business right? and, and who wants to go out and create a massive audience to sell the one percent right. but most people that start and like oh, I could do that in three months and they're like oh, I'm done this is not doing anything I'm making two cents a day exactly. you know that seven, kind of thing seven people viewing, viewing my yeah blog. so done. I think yeah. it takes a certain personality I don't think many people would go in it for the long haul. Yeah. And I was afforded just because I had done well in my other businesses that I could do it. So. Yeah. yeah, and you got it over that with what, what Malcolm Gladwell calls a tipping point. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you got it over that tipping point and now you're, you're smooth sailing. Yeah. But it's getting to that tipping point which is where most of the people fall off. I agree, I agree. Dave, thank you for coming on. You bet. Always a pleasure talking oh, to you. Oh, I love your show, and I love, I, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, your job sometimes getting guests and coming and going, it's not easy to do all that stuff, so I really yeah. appreciate all the stuff that you do. I, I think welcome. it's awesome. You're welcome, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're kindred spirits in this world of internet-based masochism, I think. <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming on, man. You I bet. It. Thank you very much. All right, that's it for another interview from this uh, Sony interview series. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. We'll see you in the next one.